They hate his words, so they act like turds. I speak of conservative author Charles Murray, that's him on the left, I'm on the right, whose speech was interrupted this week by protesters at the University of Michigan. Go Cornhuskers. They took issue with Murray's 1994 book, The Bell Curve, which they never read because there are too many words. It examines the relationship between human IQ and race, but I wouldn't know because I didn't read it either. Students turned off lights, played loud music on their phones, and the heckling began almost immediately. Dr. Charles Murray. <laughs> it's like the, the reverse of a rock concert. <laughs> Instead of yelling, free bird. Uh, Murray tried to take questions, but that didn't go well either. No questions asked. Leave our campus. <laughs> no welcome here. <laughs> that same young whippersnapper also had a theory about Republicans and suits. Oh, he'll make a great husband. <laughs> Unlike the recent crap at Berkeley, there was no violence. The protesters eventually left, and Murray finished his speech, and the students returned to what they normally do. What are you doing? I know. What have you been doing to your brother? I don't know. You don't know? I just grab him. You were scrubbing him? Yeah. Oh, Ethan. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be covered in peanut butter? <laughs> Tyrus, uh, I love how people equate free speech with suppression of free speech. So if you can say, well, those kids are just exercising their right of free speech. No, no they're doing it to silence somebody. They're, and and the, the best part was, dude didn't have nobody with him. <laughs> you're killing us, right, guys? <laughs> guys? Where did you go? Yo. <laughs> Seriously, bro, like you said you were going to say something with me, like, come on. <laughs> uh, you know what, it, man, just like the Boy Scouts, man, it's, I'm, this time's passing by. I can remember when I had, a, when, when I was in college and we had a speaker that was coming and I disagreed with him. Yeah. I would ask him a question trying to understand why I disagree with exactly. him. Exactly. You know? This is why. I mean, if I thought, if they even sung, I, that's the sweetest white supremacist race they sung it <laughs> he's racist i'm like i wouldn't even know to be offended if they was calling me black slurs but they sang it i'd be yeah. like well cat, cat you've written about this many times uh is this a typical example it is a pretty typical example. It's because they've been conditioned at these schools that if they're uncomfortable, it's everyone else's problem. Mm -hmm. And it's everyone's responsibility to make sure that they feel comfortable at all places, at all times. And that's certainly not how it works. Mm -hmm. I think that it was, like you said, kind of a pathetic showing of a protest. If I were him, I would have just started dancing or something, <laughs> you know? I think that would have been a... So the only thing, the way to counter speech you don't like is, is more speech or dancing. Dancing is wonderful. It's a form of speech at my yes. home. You know, Walter, I, I think there's a bigger agenda here. Um, if you remove speech, if you, cut, if you cut out conversation, the only option left is violence. So if you were saying to the other side, shut up, that means the only thing that to set, the only way you're going to settle an argument is with fists or knives or guns. Or by having sex with each other. Yes, that's true. Um, <laughs> There will be no speech. The only forms of interaction will be, you know, fighting and <laughs> effing. Uh, but effing. have you spent effing. time on a college campus recently? I mean, I was, in, I, I was in East Germany before the wall fell. You were freer there <laughs> yes. than you are on a college campus. And I do spend time on them. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's an informer. Yeah. Everybody you're sitting next so to true. might be turning you in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And no one will tell you what the crimes are until you're charged with so them. So true. That is so true. It's a scary place. I am so much freer sitting here on Fox News in front of all of America than I am in a college cafeteria. That, that quote has to be on a T-shirt. If you own a T-shirt company, I want you to make that T-shirt and send it to me. Uh, but I will pay the charges. <laughs> Last word, Emily. I'm from the Bay Area. Me and too! 
Let's go Raiders. San Mateo. I was 49er fan. Not Giants. Where are you at? Oakland? Born in Oakland, raised in El Cerrito. Oh, so wow. Berkeley was my stomping grounds. That, mm-hmm. that campus was where I grew up, essentially. And I think what disturbs me the most about it is that our education in that community was about engagement and dialogue and mm-hmm. peaceful action. And who is making a difference and really engaging are those quiet people that are out there in the communities talking about policy with their elected officials or campaigning for elected officials or it's everything that these students are not. And all I'm hearing are slogans and violence. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with actual discussion or dialogue. And as president of the Federalist Society in law school a million years ago, mm-hmm. I, we were dedicated toward bringing both sides of every debate to campus. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't so long ago that there isn't room for the spectrum, but it seems like this is just a totally different world than I knew. Yeah, there's no such thing as sides anymore. It's either you're with us or you're dead. That's the way they look. Mm -hmm. And it's it's identity politics. Once it infects, it destroys from within.